G'day everyone, it's Matthew Scudder from SkySight and we're here today to talk about how to use SkySight to predict wave conditions. So predicting wave on SkySight is very easy. So we've got the parameter list here. We're currently looking at New Zealand. Just zoom out to show New Zealand. And the South Island and New Zealand in particular. So we go down to the bottom and we check, check the appropriate vertical velocity box. So if we're looking to fly around four or five kilometers, we're just going to pick the four kilometer vertical velocity chart. And that's going to show us where the air is going up and down at that altitude. So we can see over the western side of South Island, New Zealand here, we can see some very strong ups. So we see these red areas here corresponding to six, seven knots up, or if we rather three, three and a half meters a second. And we can see these blue areas as well where it's going down. So minus two, minus two and a half meters a second. And we can change that through any time of the day and see how that wave moves around. Another very cool thing we can do is the wave cross section, which lets us do a cross section across the wave. So if we want to see what this wave structure actually looks like, maybe how high it goes, where what heights are strongest, instead of just flicking between all those charts, we can draw a cross section across this chart. And it's going to draw us a picture of what it looks like if we flew along this line here. So we can see as we move the pointer left to right, the little dot moves left to right here. And we can see here's a primary perhaps. So you can see the wave tilting forward two meters a second at 5,000 meters, going up to one and a half meters a second at 8,000 meters. You can see the secondary here looks much stronger. We're seeing 2.75 meters, around 4,000 meters here. And you can see it actually continues very weakly all, way, all the way up above 12,000 meters. And then we can see a tertiary wave back here as well. Uh, it looks like it's a little bit stronger to a little bit higher, 2.75 meters there. And we can see the sink between these waves as well. So minus three meters a second here, minus two meters a second here. And we can move these dots around to anywhere we like to get a different cross section. So we can see the picture looks a little bit different here. Another feature is the three-dimensional wave. So if we actually want to see the structure of that wave without using the cross-section feature, we can see the structure in three dimensions here. I'm just going to test my little computer a little bit. And we can click on the 3D wave and actually see what that wave looks like. So we can, this is showing us an isosurface of the area of wave that is greater than one meter per second. So we can see all the little wave formations there, how they all lean forward into wind. And we can pan around and zoom in on those as we please. It's not super useful for the planning of your flight, but it's really good for the understanding of your wave systems. Now, if you're actually planning a flight in wave, you can use that same wave cross section tool just in a different way to actually plan how far and how fast you might be able to go. So we do that by clicking wave cross section and then clicking start turn point and an end turn point. And now you see we have this little grab tool here. We can choose a point here and make another point on this line here. So we're just going to pick the line we think we'd like to fly through the wave all the way through here along this wave bar. And it's going to keep updating that chart for the path all the way through. And we can now see when we move the mouse up and down the chart we get this information in the bottom corner here. So if I say I'm going to fly around 5,000 meters, it's telling us the average lift is going to be at two meters a second. The average wind is going to be 22 knots at 126 degrees. If we're flying an 18 meter glider, we can expect to do 231 kph here as calculated by our McCready. And if we're in an 18 meter glider, accounting for the wind, that should take us 32 minutes to do that 113 kilometers. We can see that if we were instead to fly higher, maybe because of airspace, uh, up at 7,000 meters where it's a bit weaker, it's now going to take us 37 minutes. And if we're perhaps trying to go under airspace, well, all the way down here, it says it's not possible, so it doesn't give us any statistics anymore. But when we come up to around 3,500 meters, it starts to show us those figures again. And you can use this tool to plan your whole wave flight. Now, I recommend to do it leg by leg like this and just draw a different individual chart for each leg. So it's only considering one time step through the day. 
uh, whereas by the time you get up here you're then half an hour forward and you need to advance the time and draw and plan your next leg. Uh, this is a real power user feature. I, I wouldn't recommend uh, trying to plan your wave flights along the wave bars like this unless you're really trying to do long flights in the wave. If you just want to go for a flight in the wave, get a bit of experience in your local area, get a bit higher, I'd stick just with the vertical velocity charts. So just pick the appropriate vertical velocity chart. If you have an LX9000 or an UDI, um, you can download it onto these devices. If you have an Android phone or an iPhone, you can install the website onto your phone. We're going to cover that in another video. And then you can download these charts and show your position on it as well. So that's all you need for planning to fly wave with SkySight.